Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what a black swan event is, particularly the coronavirus that everyone is talking about. So luckily, I'm taking preventative measures and don't actually have the symptoms of the coronavirus. However, I'm just trying to be prepared. So I'm not gonna be doing the whole video with this mask on because I don't think it's gotten to where I live just yet but it's better to be safe than sorry. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what a black swan event is and its impact on the global economy. Uh, we're gonna talk about what the coronavirus is very briefly, just so we all know what we're talking about. And then could this be a potential black swan event or is this something that the media is just blowing up at this point? So without further ado, let's get into it. So what is a black swan event? So if you're not familiar with the term, this basically came about when European travelers were traveling to a new part of the world and they're kind of like traveling, exploring, and they saw a black swan. Up until that point, they thought that all swans were white and they happened to see a black one, which was very rare. So that brings me to point number one. So black swan events are extremely rare events with severe consequences. So the second part is, is that they cannot be predicted, okay? They cannot be predicted beforehand because there are things like natural disasters, terrorist attacks, global wars, um, you know, pandemics, diseases, kind of like the topic we're talking about today. These are complete game changers that financial models cannot take into account, and that's why these things can never truly be priced into asset values. Okay, so black swan events can cause catastrophic damage to the economy. Uh, most people consider the 2008 financial crisis to be a black swan event. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper about that, I highly recommend the book, The Black Swan uh, by Nicholas Taleb or Taleb. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. He wrote an excellent book about black swan events and how they um, uh, conjoin with financial events. So I just want to give a quick overview. The second part is we're going to talk very, very briefly about what the coronavirus even is. And then the third part of the video, which is the most important, is going to be talking about if this thing really is a black swan event and how it ties into the global economy. So what is the coronavirus? So just very briefly, just so we all know what we're talking about here, if you haven't been following this on social media, the memes are incredible. Um, I, don't mean, I don't mean to laugh at anyone's misfortune, but these are some of the funniest memes I've seen. Uh, a lot of people think this originated from eating bats and the bat suit memes are unbelievable, um, but I digress. So coronaviruses are typically a group of viruses that cause diseases in mammals and birds. And they're typically in humans, they are respiratory diseases. So meaning things that are your chest, your lungs, things like that. So basically uh, this is similar to the SARS virus. If you're old enough to remember that SARS pandemic in 2003, um, there were definitely a lot of deaths associated with that. So far there's been 106 deaths confirmed worldwide with about 4,500 plus cases and it seems to be spreading. I think a lot of that is due to how, how this is such a global economy. Um, you know, a lot of things come from China. If you're ordering things on Amazon, a lot of those things are made in China. Uh, same thing with AliExpress and Alibaba and all that. So we will get into that in the third part of this video. So basically the last point I wanna make about this is that uh, there's been about 50 million people that have been quarantined quarantined in China. Um, and however, 5 million actually left the city of Wuhan where this actually originated. So there seems to be um, a lot of spreading that's going on with this disease. So the last part of this video and the meat of the video is could the coronavirus actually be a black swan event? And we're going to go into that right now. Is the coronavirus a black swan event? So in my opinion, in short, uh, right now, no, absolutely not. It all depends on how severe something like this gets, okay? So it's all over the mainstream media. People wanna be talking about it. it sounds cool to talk about it. Um, the memes, like I said, are unbelievable, but I'm not gonna show any here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, the reason I talk about this is because corporate executives, they love certainty and predictability, okay? So uncertainty to a upper level, C-level executive that has to run a big ship or a big company, especially if it's publicly traded, um, certainty and predictability is the best. Uncertainty is like a nightmare scenario. So this is when companies have to play their cards close to their chest, they have to be very conservative, uh, they have to be fiscally conservative, potentially laying people off, uh, potentially cutting back certain things uh, in terms of products, uh, research, things like that. So the, the main point is, is that there's gonna be a lack of spending, and this is the biggest fear for 
pretty much anyone that's in business in the global economy, okay? So this says lack of spending in the global economy. So picture people spending less because of these black swan events. So let's play it out in a real life example right here. So what is actually happening in China is that there's a shutting down of restaurants, hotels. I'll do like a little plate with a fork and a knife. That just looks like 101. That is not a knife. Who has a knife with a handle like that? Terrible. This is what I'm gonna do. Restaurants, uh, hotels. Here's a nice little hotel. Okay. Resorts, we'll do a little beachfront property with the palm tree. Uh, and let's just picture travel. There's a nice airplane. It's a Boeing uh, 737. Okay. So things that are actually happening right now in China is that there's um, travel bans that the government is actually imposing. So there's also lack of interest in going to these areas where the pandemic is coming from. And there's also obviously restrictions that people are applying themselves just because they don't want to go to this area. So these businesses that are in business, that get business from tourism. So uh, basically the restaurants, the hotels, the resorts, the travel um, airlines, for example, travel agencies even. Uh, these are all companies that are gonna be affected by this pandemic, okay? So these businesses lose money and this hurts their earnings. So instead of being in the black, you know, making a profit or realizing a profit, they're gonna be in the red. So what this does is if these are publicly traded companies, say this is, I don't know, American Airlines, for example. These are all publicly traded companies whose stock uh, value may actually go down, affecting the real world stock price, affecting the shareholders value in their overall portfolio. So what happened in 2008 was a lot of companies went down by you know, 20, 30, 40%, which caused a huge detriment to people's retirement portfolios, um, their confidence in the market, so on and so forth, okay? So this affects real people just from a shareholder standpoint. What if you worked for one of these companies, okay? So what a real actual scenario going on right now is, is that uh, Starbucks in China is actually losing about 3% of its entire Chinese revenue because of this coronavirus, okay? They, they just came out with a statement saying, hey, we may need to revise 2020 earnings because of this disease, okay? So now pretend your uh, Starbucks location or your airline or your resort or your hotel or your restaurant uh, has been shut down by the government or by you know Center for Disease Control for two weeks, three weeks, five weeks, 10 weeks, a year, okay? You're obviously not realizing money. However, the people that own these businesses still have overhead. What's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna fire people. They're gonna lay people off, okay? So these are real world implications. So real people are losing real jobs and then they don't have a real income, meaning they can't spend money in the real economy, meaning that the blood flow, aka the money circulating within an economy, goes down, going back to this lack of spending in the global economy, okay? Now, if you wanna look at a bigger picture, uh, we're gonna talk about something called systemic risk, okay? So systemic risk is basically just what it sounds like. It's risk to the entire system. So systemic risk. So systemic risk is basically what it sounds like. It's kind of like the whole system uh, collapsing or going down because of this black swan event, okay? So what systemic risk poses is that, say for example, all those examples that I just used, the restaurant, the hotel, the resort, you know, the airline, whatever, say this pandemic goes to like 28 days later or like I am legend status where it's like zombies, you know, things like that. They can't find a cure, you know, it's crazy. It's a global pandemic, right? So those businesses are shut down for a longer period of time, meaning that their entire industry may potentially collapse because there's no one using their services, okay? If it gets bad enough, that's obviously not gonna be the case, but you never know. So systemic risk would have to get a bigger player involved to try and prop everything up. So I think that central banks would have to get involved if this were to get bad enough, if this black swan event were bad enough, which, which they did after 2008. So for about 10 years now, we've had a policy of 0% interest rates, okay? So the reason the Fed or central banks in general, some are actually even negative. So instead of 0% interest rates, Europe, let's just call it negative 1%, um, just for example, they're actually adopting negative interest rates. So for you to spend money, take out loans, stimulate the economy, 
get the blood flow going because no normal person is going to save money and hoard money um, when interest rates are extremely low because you're not getting a lot of value there. You're not even keeping up with inflation. What you're going to do is, is you're going to invest in things. You're going to borrow cheap money. You're going to buy things. You're going to say, hey, I can get 0% on my car loan. You know, let me take out some money, right? So I think central banks would have to lower interest rates to stimulate consumer activity, thus trying to prop up the system. Now, this is a bad example just because with the coronavirus, if it were to get to uh, zombie apocalypse levels, um, this doesn't mean anything. You're looking at guns and ammo and gold and food at this point. But I'm talking about something like after 2008, we have seen 10 years, 10 and a half years of zero interest rate policy, um, even though the economy has quote unquote been so strong. So this is pretty much it for the video. Um, I know that I gave pretty simple examples, but again, um, I don't want to complicate this subject. A black swan event is simply, just to reiterate, is simply an event that is very unpredictable. Uh, it has catastrophic uh, repercussions throughout the economy and throughout other parts of society, just like 2008. Um, and it's not predictable, as I mentioned. So if you got anything out of this video, I appreciate you giving it a thumbs up, possibly sharing it with a friend or family member. Uh, and just wear your mask around. You know, don't go to, I'm not going to say that. I actually just ate at a, <laughs> I was just in Cleveland's Chinatown on Sunday and it was great. It was excellent. I love Chinese people. Um, and the food was great too. However, you know, bust out your little mask here. It'll help. Thank you so much for watching everybody and have a prosperous day.